The game of basketball is funny, man. This Bulls team, too, I tell you, after getting destroyed and embarrassed to the Charlotte Hornets the other night, and really this was the case in their last four games uh, going into tonight, and in leading up to tonight's game, we learned that DeMar DeRozan, Zach Levine, Nikola Vucevic, Alex Caruso, and Kobe White all were going to be out for this game. So naturally, you assume this is going to be another bad loss because who on this Bulls team is going to score when you have all of the aforementioned players out of the lineup. And of course, what did the Bulls do? They went ahead and essentially did what the Hornets did to the Bulls the other night, in the first half anyway, because the second half was a bit of a different story. But coming out, playing with a high level of energy, hustle and grit in what seemed like they were hitting every shot that they were throwing up to start the game. Now, yes, I'm aware the Wolves were without... Carl Anthony Towns as they rested him leading up to the playing game, and Anthony Edwards only played 18 minutes who put on a clinic the other night, but obviously the Bulls were without their best players as well, and there was no excuse for the Wolves to get manhandled to start the game in the first half, and I loved every minute of it. The second half, not the best performance from the Bulls, but obviously uh, you had guys putting in minutes that they're just not used to playing, and got a little tired and started making some careless mistakes, but what impressed me was that this young group kept it together, stayed calm in the face of adversity after blowing a 28-point lead, and won the game. And I know a lot of people will say, well, whatever, dude, this was a meaningless game, really, for both teams, because the Wolves were already locked into their seat as well. But despite all of this, and it being a meaningless game, I actually thought the Bulls putting up a performance like this was very important going into the postseason, and I'll explain why. First and foremost, the Bulls won on the road, which they have been a bad road team all season. And of course, we know now that the Bulls are going to be facing the Bucks in the first round, which I'll talk about in a bit and cover more in detail in another video. But we know the Bulls are going to start off the series on the road for the first two games. That's more of a minor thing, but just saying to get a win on the road and do so convincingly is good for the team's overall confidence. Second, with the Bulls' main players being out tonight, who have really struggled recently with their lack of energy and effort to see their bench guys, their younger players, some of them who have been out of the rotation most of the year and barely getting any playing time, to see them come out, play their butts off, to break open a massive lead to start the game, and to keep their heads up despite having the Wolves come back and bring it all the way to within one point, and to keep fighting hitting some big shots in the fourth quarter from guys like Io and Patrick Williams, for the starters to see their second unit come out and play the way they did, that sends a message to them that one, they can trust in these guys and don't need to be forcing shots by way of ISO plays, two, that if these guys can play with this type of energy and effort in an otherwise meaningless game, then why can't they do the same? That they're letting their crew down when they come out with a lackluster performance, regardless of the impact of a particular basketball game. Because you saw it in tonight, these guys were fighting. These guys are trying to earn minutes, rotational spots in the playoffs. They want it more. And that type of effort, that should light a fire under your starting lineup. And then finally, and most importantly, you needed a game like this from Patrick Williams right before going into the playoffs. I know it's not going to be the same level of competition. The Wolves bench players are not going to be anything compared to going up against the defending champs and the best player in the world, who I imagine he's likely going to be guarding in most games. But you needed this type of game from Patrick to give him a boost of confidence, to show that he has the talent to be a great player in this league and that if he just applies himself, plays with aggression, and stays focused, good things can happen. Don't let the hype of being the number four overall pick get to you. You miss some shots, don't let it affect your confidence. Just go and play your game. Because look, with the way the Bulls have been playing recently, and the inconsistency coming from Vucevic and Kobe White specifically, sometimes even Levine, you're going to need another scoring option for the Bulls with Lonzo Ball being out. Even if Patrick can get you 12 to 14 points a game in this upcoming playoff series against the Bucks, that is huge for the Bulls when guys like Vucevic and Kobe go MIA. Patrick tonight was doing a little bit of everything. He was bringing up the ball and playing the point, driving to the hoop, taking mid-range jumpers, taking threes, playing strong defense, drawing contact to get to the line. This is the Patrick Williams we needed to see. This is the Patrick Williams that guys have been waiting for. Now, we need to see him do it consistently and not against bench warmers from the Wolves, but everyone talks about Patrick Williams and his potential and the fundamentals that he has as a basketball player. You saw that showcase tonight. 
Patrick finished the game with 35 points, a career high, his first 30-point game, in fact, in his career. Shot 10 for 21. He even got to the free throw line for 14 free throw attempts. Again, the assertiveness tonight in drawing contact, uh, which is what we have really rarely seen from Patrick this season. He was also 3 for 4 from 3 and hit a big 3 towards the end of the game when the Bulls really needed it. He also had 4 rebounds and 4 assists. Just a solid game from Patrick. And like I said, that was the most promising thing from tonight's game and why I think it was important because you're going to need this type of Patrick Williams going against the Bucks in the playoffs. Then how about the rookie Aodesumu tonight? Not only did he hit that big three as well as that drive to the basket late in the game to quiet the crowd after the Wolves cut it to within one possession, he was all over the place on both ends of the floor, scoring 26 points on 9 for 18 shooting, 3 for 6 from 3, he also had 5 rebounds and 6 assists and 2 steals. He did have 7 turnovers tonight, and actually the Bulls as a whole turned the ball over a lot, 21 times. I mean, that just shows the level of inexperience that was on the court tonight. Kind of a miracle they didn't lose this game with the amount of turnovers they had, but turnovers aside... Io was great tonight. He really was the Bulls' main facilitator and floor general uh, when he was on the court, and he was virtually on the court the whole game. Dude played 45 minutes. Billy could have given him maybe a little more rest, but I also get it. This is a really good practice game, if you will, for some of these younger guys, which is why you also saw Patrick Williams play 41 minutes tonight. And uh, Troy Brown Jr., 17 points, 11 rebounds in 40 minutes. Dude had some really nice plays too. Like, where was that all season? Had some not so great plays either, which reminded me why he is out of the rotation. But really overall, this was a good game from Troy. Seven for 13 shooting. He also had four assists to go along with his 17 and 11. Uh, and he was also uh, good in defense tonight, playing on the wing as well. Uh, it was interesting that Billy Donovan didn't really play either of his backup centers all that much, despite the fact that they both played pretty well when they were on the court. Uh, Tristan Thompson, I get. I mean, he's a veteran. Uh, you don't really need to be giving him development type minutes in a game like this, not before the playoffs. But what I liked from Thompson in this game was his grit and bullying guys in the paint to really help the Bulls get started off to that big lead. And then when Tony Bradley played, he was solid as well. 11 points, 8 rebounds in 15 minutes. Uh, he did still have his Tony Bradley moments where you're like, is this guy really in the NBA? But I mean, he was playing with a lot of more confidence uh, and was fighting tooth and nail on the offensive glass. Six of his eight rebounds were offensive rebounds. Again, something the Bulls have really struggled with all season. Uh, Derek Jones Jr. was also great in the minutes he played. 12 points, uh, four rebounds, also playing some solid defense and even getting some minutes at the five, which uh, we have seen here and there this season when the Bulls have really had to go small. Overall though, the Bulls shot well, 53% from the floor, 10 for 21 from three. They worked the Wolves on the glass, out rebounding them 48 to 32. The ball movement was great in the first half, not so much in the second half. But anyway, as I mentioned, uh, there is something to be said about how this team showed up, even in a meaningless game. And I actually think it's the little things from this game that are going to help the Bulls going into the playoffs. Like a big game from Patrick for his confidence. Same can be said about Io or the starters being out and watching their second unit play hard despite the circumstances, or the fact that this team really plays well in transition and shouldn't have to rely so much on iso ball to generate offense. All of these subtle things can change a team's mindset and outlook going into the postseason. I still have my doubts on how the Bulls will actually do against the Bucks. I think they'll be lucky to even win one game in that series at best, but it just all depends on on which Bulls team decides to show up. I will have a more detailed video breaking down the Bulls-Bucks matchup in the first round, likely out tomorrow, so be on the lookout for that. I'm also planning on having some guest speakers on the channel this week, so tune into those as well if you're interested. Keep in mind, I am expecting a baby in the next two weeks, really any day now, so you might see the content slow down when that happens, but until it does, I'll keep grinding it out. And as always, guys, be sure to subscribe if you're a Bulls fan as I do post daily Bulls content. Thanks again for tuning in, guys, and I will catch you in the next one.